field verification helps to understand if the RI system has performed within its specification. This is a critical step to provide confidence that the tolerances used in integrity decision making are applicable and plausible. In the US it's now a legal requirement under API 1163 to validate each individual ILI run to make sure that the ILI system has met its specification, but is seen as best practice in the rest of the world. In conventional non-destructive testing, tolerances can be applied to compensate for uncertainty in the measurement process, and this generally results in conservative or safe decision making. When validating ILI system performance, large infield tolerances can hide errors or mask trends that may indicate that the ILI system has not performed within its specification and so is unconservative. However, if you assume that infield measurement is absolute, this may unfairly represent the ILI performance because the error in the field measurement is not accounted for. This will result in potentially rejecting the ILI results and rerunning more tools that may not be necessary. Yes. Some features have a much smaller associated tolerance because of the direct measurement techniques used, like using a micrometer for an external metal loss feature. This means the infield tolerance has little effect on the combined tolerance from API 1163 used to determine if the measurement is in or out of specification. However, when you look at crack sizing, for example, the variability of results is much more significant and therefore has a much bigger impact on the combined tolerance. The short answer is no. Data quality is currently a combination of technology, procedure and expertise. For the data to be of sufficient quality to validate ILI performance, we need all three of these factors to be refined to give us good, reliable data that can be used to validate ILI performance. So quality is very difficult to quantify after the event. And if we don't understand the quality of the work being performed, we have to use assumptions which can be detrimental to understanding the tool performance or have implications on the pipeline integrity management. Blind trials on representative samples are an excellent way of understanding the competence and tolerance of individual inspectors, which is a critical step in understanding ILI performance. So there is limited industry guidance for ILI validations. The Pipeline Operators Forum, Document 310, covers the basis of how to perform a validation recommended by API 1163, but is limited in the detail of some of the inspection types. For a more concise understanding of the background of why field verification is a critical component of any ILI campaign, and a more detailed look into why quality is so important, Rosen have developed an eLearn which is freely available through the Rosen Competence Club to increase the awareness of this topic.